Hello, everyone, and thank you for being here. Um, Summer Garcia with Volunteers of America up here in Northern Colorado is going to be doing the training this morning. Um, so I will really let Summer uh, kick it off here. All right. Can you guys hear me okay? Hear you real good, Summer. It's Mike in uh, Pueblo. Hey, hey, Mike. <laughs> All right, so we'll, we will just get started. So I'm going to be talking about the VI SPDAT, um, why we need the VI SPDAT. Um, I'm also going to be looking at the actual VI SPDAT, um, different versions, and the opening script and why the opening script is very important. Um, then we'll look at some scoring, some tips that I've learned over time, and then some question and answer at the end. It shouldn't be too long. So um, what is the VI SPDAT? Uh, so what that actually stands for is Vulnerability Index and Service Prioritization Decision Assist Assistance Tool. It's actually, uh, they combine two tools that were already being used to make a super tool. Um, so the VI, the Vulnerability Index, was developed by Community Solutions. Um, it was an out, a street outreach tool that um, really was looking for, med you know, what kind of medical things were happening, determine chronicity, medical vulnerability for homeless individuals. The service prioritization decision assessment tool um, was developed by ORCODE Consulting, and it was an intake and a case management tool. Um, over 70 communities were using it, and it was based on a wide body of social science research. Um, the tool helps providers allocate resources in a logical, targeted way, so they just combine them to make um, the VI SPDAT, and that's what we're using to help um, communities end homelessness. Um, so why we need the VI SPDAT? In the past, communities have really just allocated housing resources, like on a first come, first serve basis. So individuals and families often took their place at the bottom of waiting lists, um, regardless of their chronicity, uh, medical vulnerability, acuity, and ability to address their own housing instability. Um, so the VI SPDAT allows communities to quickly assess various health and social needs and then match them to the most appropriate um, housing interventions. And then it also takes the pressure off of service providers um, from making emotional decisions or really difficult decisions. Um, so it reframes the moment of assistance as an opportunity to match each um, client with the best housing and service options for his or her individual needs. Um, it also helps make the case for permanent supportive housing. Um, eight and above for the score will be permanent housing or recommended for permanent housing, rapid rehousing, um, and other community resources. So uh, the tool is actually really rooted in exhaustive research. So you can essentially, the recommendations you can um be sure that the recommendation recommended uh intervention is the most appropriate path for that person um and then like i said it helps communities avoid subsidy overkill so it's it's at matching the most intensive supports to those with the highest scores and those that don't need the most intensive um housing resources then, I mean, that'll, that'll go off of the score. I'll talk about that more later. So different versions of the VI SPDAT for different populations. Currently here, we are using three different ones. We have the adult um, individuals VI SPDAT, we have the family VI SPDAT, and we also have the TAY VI SPDAT, which is um, transition age youth. Um, I have seen in other uh, community, in other communities, and if this is somewhere that our communities are going, there's people leaving incarceration, people exiting longer term hospitalizations. Um, it's just what is the need in your community and trying to figure out what um, VI SPDAT goes best with that population. 
So next, um, talking about the opening script and how important it is that you're everyone in your community who is administering the VI SPDA is saying the same thing and conveying the same message. Um, and that way you can get consistency in your scores. Um, so if I were to give a VI SPDA to somebody here at Volunteers of America and they went to the homeless shelter and took it again, um, which you shouldn't do that, but if they did, you should be able to get the same score. Um, so some of the things you want to include in your opening script, um, obviously the name of the person who is giving the survey, the organization that they're affiliated with, give them a time, uh, how long it's gonna take. Um, it takes about 10 minutes and that's not, um, unless you have other questions that you add to the end that are unscored, it might take a little bit longer, um, that you're looking for yes, no, or one word answers, not their full story. Um, but some questions are sensitive in nature and that uh, they may choose to refuse to answer any question. They can actually refuse to take the VI SIDA altogether, but um, that is a point where you would want to uh, really explain the importance of doing the VI SIDA. Um, also, if they don't understand a particular question um, that you can clarify, you can't change the questions. You have to um, read them exactly how they are, but you can um, clarify and you can explain. Um, information, you want to let them know where the information is going to be stored and what's going to happen with the information. So if your community is going to be using HMIS, you want to let them know that it's going to be in a database called HMIS. Or if it's going to be on a um, some sort of shared system. Um, also, you want to get their consent to participate. Uh, we have releases of information that they do sign. Um, and the importance of honest responses. A lot of times they will tell you things that you want to hear or they're scared that they're not going to get services so they won't answer honestly. So you want to make sure that they know that there's no judgment just to be honest with their answers. Um, and then how they can access. If they really want to access their information, um, obviously they can. So the next slide, this one is just a sample of an opening script. The one that we actually use for our uh, VI SPDAT that we use here um, in Northern Colorado is a little bit different, but I just wanted to show you guys quickly what it could sound like. Um, so here it says my name is, and then you put your name in there, and I work for a group called wherever you are. I have a 10 minute survey that I would like to complete with you. The answers will help us determine how we can go about supporting and housing you. Most questions only require a yes or no. Some questions require a one word answer. Um, I'll be honest, some questions are personal in nature, but you, but know that you can skip or refuse any question. The information collected goes into the whatever database, a shared database that all our shelters and housing providers can access. And once it is there, other providers in the community will not make you complete the survey multiple times. If you do not understand a question, let me know and I would be happy to clarify. If it seems to me that you don't understand a question, I will also do my best to explain it to you without you needing to ask for clarification. One last thing you sh we should chat about, I've been doing this long enough to know that some people will tell me what they want me to hear rather than telling me or even themselves the truth. It's up to you, but the more honest you are, the better we can figure out the best support for you. And that's just an example. Like I said, ours is a little bit different, um, but whatever works best for your community. And like I said, as long as everybody who is administering the VS for that is conveying the same message and you should be getting pretty um, accurate scores and they should be consistent across the board. So I thought next we could look at the VI SPDAT um, and the actual like scoring, how you go through it. 
Um, the things that the VI SPDA um, that we're using the 2.0, it goes over as basic information, history of housing and homelessness, um, risks, socialization and daily functions, um, wellness, and then we also have the section of the unscored follow-up questions. And I was going to show you guys our VI SPDA. Can you guys see this? Is everybody seeing the VI SPDA? Yes, I am. Nope. Okay. Okay, just making sure. So this is the one that we have. Obviously, we want some information. We add uh, the people who are administering it up there. So just in case there's a question, we can always go back to them and ask them. We do have our opening script. Um, and then we have them sign the release. But what I wanted to point out is the different sections. So basic information. If the person is 60 years or older, they do score a one. And the scores will only be a one or a zero. And you'll see in a second how that works. And then also, let's see, the first section is history of housing and homelessness. I wanted to point out on question number two, that if somebody is at, if they're marking that they're at home or with friends, um, they're not literally homeless, so you wouldn't continue to do the VI SPDAT because the VI SPDAT is specifically for those who are literally homeless. So if they answer anything other than shelter, transitional housing, or at home with family or friends, then they score one. Um, and then in here, how long has it been since you have lived in permanent stable housing? In the last three years, how many times have you been homeless? Um, if the person has experienced one or more consecutive years of homelessness and or four plus or more episodes of homelessness, then they would just score one here as well. Um, the risk, I mean, it just, here is where they're asking how many times have you been to the hospital, taken to the uh, hospital in the ambulance, that type of thing. So if they were to put uh, 10 here, um, down here, these scores can only be a one or a zero. So even if they put like six up here, it would just still be a one down here. Um, we have had a confusion here. Um, I had someone tell me he had just gotten out of jail and he told me that he hadn't had any interaction with the police in the last six months. So that is something that I would clarify someone. Um, and these ones, obviously, if they answer a one to have you been attacked or beaten up since becoming homeless, or have you tried, to, have you threatened or tried to harm yourself and anyone or anyone else in the last year, if they answered yes to either one of those, then they get a one. Um, do you have any legal stuff going on right now that may result in you being locked up, having to pay fines, or make it more difficult to rent a place to live? If they say yes, then they also get a one in this one as well. Does anybody force or trick you to do things you don't want to do? Um, or do you think do things that may be considered risky, like exchange sex for money, run drugs for someone? have unprotected sex with someone you don't really know, share a needle, anything like that. If they answer yes to any of those, they get a one here. Um, socialization and daily functioning. So if they owe anybody money um, or, you know, if they're getting uh, money like under the table, regular job, if they answer yes to 11 or no to 12, then they're gonna score one in here. Um, do you have planned activities other than just surviving that make you happy or make you feel happy and fulfilled? Um, if they say no, then they'll get a one. Um, are you currently able to take care of basic needs like bathing, changing clothes, using a restroom, getting food and clean water and other things? So if they say no, this is looking for the self-care. Um, 
and it's also self-report. So if they say, yeah, if they say no, then they get a one. Is your current homelessness in any way uh, caused by a relationship that broke down, an unhealthy or abusive relationship, or because family or friends caused you to become evicted? If they say yes, then they get a one. So the wellness, um, this is asking about different uh, physical and um, things that would prevent you from living independently type things. Um, one that confuses people is if there was space available in a program that specifically assists people that live with HIV or AIDS, would that be of interest to you? A lot of people say yes, because they don't understand um, that it would be specifically to assist people living with HIV or AIDS. So we do have, I um, have noticed that we do have to clarify a lot on that question. Now on this one, if they say yes to any of the above, they'll get a one here. Um, has your, and then this one is about substance use, uh, so any drinking or drug use in the past. Um, if they yes to any of those two questions, then they'll get a one as well for substance use. And um, then this one is for, these questions are about mental health, um, asking about past head injuries, mental health issues or concerns, or developmental disability, um, and then if they say yes to any of those, they get a one. The next part is if they scored a one for physical health, a one for substance use, and a one for mental health, then they would get a one for trimorbidity. If they got a zero in any one of those, um, they would not get the one for trimorbidity. I do see sometimes with VI spadots that we get mixed up on that one um, and it can throw off the score a little bit. Um, the next section is about medications. If you're not taking medications like a doctor would like you to or if you're selling them basically, um, if they answer yes, then you put a one in there. And this is the last question about abuse and trauma and if they answer yes to this question, then you would put one. And then basically you go through and you add it up. So nobody's going to, for any of those, they're not going to get, they're either going to get a zero or a one. Shouldn't be higher than that. These are our follow-up questions, um, depending on what population. I mean, these we just found were very helpful for people that we were doing the VI spit out with. Um, are there any other adults who will be living with you? Um, what are their names? And this one I think is very important. Um, what documentation do you have? Um, just get them document ready. So if, they, if they're in and they need their VAID or DD-214 or you know birth certificate, social security card, um, at this point you would ask them what they need and then um, either you do it or sign somebody to help them start getting that stuff together so that when housing becomes available, they have whatever they need to get into that specific housing. Um, and then asking them, would you prefer someone to store your documents for you? Um, asking about how much um, income or how much money that they have um, so that you can plan ahead. And if they're a veteran, um, this helps determine uh, if they're VHA uh, um, eligible, so if they can get health care at the VA, or if they'd be eligible for a HUD-BASH voucher if we needed it. Um, and then where is the easiest place to find, to find them on a regular basis? Um, if there is a place, uh, a time that they're there, a phone number, email, somewhere where we can leave them a message because if housing becomes available quickly and we want to be able to get a hold of that person quickly um, so that they can access the housing. And then any other information that you think would be helpful, we have it listed there. So let's see. So the next part, like I was saying, um, for the scoring, um, 
you add up what they had gotten, grand total. And then over here is the recommendation. So eight and higher um, would be for permanent supportive housing. Four through seven is um, an assessment for rapid rehousing. And this is a zero through three, no housing intervention. They can, uh, I would say not no housing intervention, but maybe just a less intensive one. Um, maybe there's, because uh, in our program, we've helped a lot of people that have zeros or threes. And I actually had someone who scored a zero, but she, um, if she would have answered the questions on the BI Spadat, um, honestly, she probably would have gotten a higher score. And if I would have just gone off of this, I wouldn't have done anything with her, which she definitely needed our help. This is just the different ways that the different BI spadats are scored and what that means. Um, the family ones, uh, you can get, the highest you can get on the family BI spadat is a 22, which is equivalent to a 17 for the youth and for single adults. Um, I wanted to go over some of the reasons um, that people might be getting different scores um, at different agencies. Um, like I said earlier, they wanna, they tell you what they think you wanna hear rather than the truth. Um, I think sometimes the different like rapport that you have with individuals affects their, um, the way they'll answer questions as well. Um, poor understanding of the purpose of the VI SPDAT. Um, that's why I think the opening script and really explaining the importance of it and the importance of honest answers and that there won't be any judgment. Uh, I think some people are, uh, there's a fear of not getting services if they say yes to certain questions or no. Um, so you wanna make sure that they know um, regardless of how they answer, I mean, they will get some sort of service. Um, I think the atmosphere, if you're, uh, if somebody's here at our office, they might answer different than if they're in a crowded space in the park answering um, the questions. And then I've also noticed that um, if if a person comes in and we're doing the VI spit out, but they have kids, teenagers or um, family with them in any way, like a significant other, sometimes they don't um, want to answer the questions. We have in the past, uh, we did a VI spit out with a homeless individual and his friend was with him. And um, he, he did the VI spit out, but he came after and he wrote us a little note and he said, I actually, do have a developmental disability and I have this, but I didn't want to say it because my friend is nosy. So we went back and changed um, his answers there. Uh, and then I think the way the questions are being asked, so your tone of voice or the way you ask them. So you want to make sure you're relaxed and you're not, there's not like a judgmental tone of any sort when you're asking certain questions. And then clarifying any confusing questions, like the opening script said, if they look confused, um, clarify that for them. I also, some of the questions on the VI spit out are like, in the last six months, how many times have you had an interaction with the police? So I've sort of been like, that's around Christmas time, or that was in the summertime or the spring, just to try to help them figure out the time frame. Um, and then things that I have learned over time doing the VI Spadat and things that uh, we've decided. So we don't share the score with the individual. We don't, I don't even tell them that they get a score only because I don't want it to be like, oh, you got an eight, like you're so vulnerable. I, I don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable that they got a high score or a low score don't want them to think that they're not going to get any services if they get a low score or vice versa. Um, I don't score the VI Spadat in front of the individual um, just because obviously I didn't tell them that they were getting a score. Um, and don't share the VI Spadat recommendations so you don't want to be like, oh, you got a 10, like you're 
the recommendation is permanent supportive housing because maybe that is not actually the right specific housing for that person. And there might not be available permanent supportive housing units in your community at that time. So you don't want to tell them that and then have them be waiting for a long time. Um, and that like the next one, don't share possible outcomes. Um, because the way the by name list is, they could be, you know, at the top of the list one week and there's no resources really to be given out or anything. And then the next week there, there's five people ahead of them when there's, you know, like five vouchers. Um, so you don't want to give them like a time frame, either a possible outcome. Um, you don't want to, it's not guaranteed, but it's definitely, we're definitely going to consider them for any housing resource, you know, that comes up, but you don't want to like guarantee anything at that time. And then that's all I had for that. If there's any questions or anything that you need me to clarify or that I didn't go over, um, you can ask me now. Or if something comes up later, you can always ask later. Pretty darn good there, Summer. I don't have any questions for you. Okay, thanks. I have a I have a question. Um, okay. This is Tammy and Durango. Um, and we do the, a lot of agencies do the assessment in our community. And we um, get them and then put them on a wait list and have a hard time from the answers they give to determine if they're actually disabled or not. And so, you know, for permanent supportive, you have to be um, chronically homeless. And we sometimes don't know that until way into it. And then it just, it would be really nice to be clear at the beginning. Do you have any suggestions for how to um, get the information that they're likely um, disabled or not? I mean, I think, um... So for us, it's part of our intake. We ask those questions, but if you if it's not part of your intake, you could always um, add follow up questions. Um, if it's just the VI spadat, and then that way you can ask if they do have a disability, and if they do, um, is it documented somewhere? Does a doctor know? Are you getting services for that? And um, do you have any award letters or things like that? And if they um, if they don't, if maybe that's something that you could help them get if they do have a disability of some sort. So you so you cover that at the end of like an additional question at the end? Yeah, well, uh, most of the time when we do the VI spit out, we're doing it with our intake, which asks those questions. But if you're just doing the VI spit out with somebody, you could do that as like a follow up question um, at the end. And I mean, that's what I, I mean, that's what I think. But if anybody else on the line has a suggestion that does the VI spit out, they might be able to help too. Betsy, are you there? Oh. Um, I'm here, son. Yeah, well, you want, I, I'm happy to kind of go over that question. Okay. So you, could you repeat it a little bit though for me? Um, yes, we, so we have uh, in our community, there's really a lot of agencies doing the assessment. And um, so many of them are just doing that, not doing any other intake except for the, for the prevention diversion. But um, just to identify people who are disabled um, in a more, um, solid way so on down the line we're not wondering uh, yeah what's your question i'm, I'm so sorry yeah I, yeah it's more it's like too, she wants to know how to find out early on 
um, if somebody has a disability, because for permanent supportive housing, you do have to have a disability as well as being chronically homeless. Okay. And so if you're just doing the VI SPDAT, she wants to know, is there a part or how do you find out how, if somebody has a disability early on with just the VI SPDAT without using, because we use HMIS mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. to ask those questions and not you know, everyone does does hmis it's doing the mm -hmm. assessment yeah well i'll tell you that yeah during that vi spadat um when you are asking those questions it's going to be self-report you don't know for sure um and you go by what the uh, veteran or the homeless person indicates to you about that issue um, now, if you have any type of SSI or award letters, that might give you a bit of an indication of, um, you know, how much they're receiving, of course, but why as well, um, if it's related to a disability of some type. Um, hopefully that's a little bit more helpful for you. Yeah, but we don't, we don't do um, documentation at that point. I mean, I didn't know anybody did, actually. Um, what it just would that i mean you could like i said just add a, like a follow-up question that just asks do you have a disability so you can start to talk to them about if they're getting um yeah like social security disability i didn't i didn't yeah. know that was um at the, at the end um um those follow-up questions uh, is a part where it's like do you like what sort of documentation do you have or that you need i mean it does say like any award letters there disability um so i think before that you could always ask do you have a disability and if they say yes then maybe another follow-up question is do you have um do you have you're not you doc okay let's see you know i okay. if i could maybe just uh just real quick so uh, the vi spadat you know it is one tool that we use to kind of assess uh, vulnerability um but most often you know the case managers are doing you know kind of a, an assessment during time of intake or you know a bio biosocial kind of assessment where they're asking about wellness and health um they're asking about any mental health illness any physical health illness and that's really our time to kind of and our opportunity to kind of get to know them um and ask those kind of specific questions um is that something that you guys do as well well our agency does a more um full assessment we do enter into hmis but we have the multiple sites you know yeah uh, policy for and we probably have um, I don't know, eight or more agencies doing the assessment so it's just trying to get people all doing the same thing so that we can put them on the waiting list right and I just didn't know yeah. if people ask questions during extra questions during the like the disability segment or if they if they ask them at the end or how mm -hmm. they or if they can they, if we can even require documentation at that juncture. Um, so on the screen, um, I can, these are our follow-up questions and this is something too that um, I can definitely look into and um, ask like our community how exactly they do it. Um, those that aren't doing like a full on intake and asking those extra questions, how they um, know if the person um, has a disability and I can definitely uh, ask that and then get back to you. I did want to show you this our follow-up questions yeah. and like in this this section with the like um, asking what documentation I mean so I guess just, you could always you're asking sorry, go ahead. this but you're not you're asking these but you're not necessarily collecting those documents is that right? No no um, if I were just doing this with somebody uh, at a shelter or something like that, I, I wouldn't be collecting this information right now. 
Yep. And okay. Tammy, uh, just to add on to this, so this is Melanie. Um, that's one of the things um, that HUD uh, really talks about and emphasizes is because um, you're talking about, you know, verifying chronic status. Um, anything that a case conferencing team or case managers or people that are VA spit adding, um, anything that they can do to help determine eligibility is um, encouraged, right? So asking these types of follow-up questions and those types of things um, is certainly something that those that are VA spit adding can do to help um, to help determine um, whether or not someone is, is, you know, documenting chronic status, basically. Um, okay, so yeah, we but we the, can just add another page um, to the survey that has these follow-up questions. Yep, they just can't. These questions can't be scored. You know that they, they right. can't be added to any sort of score. But yep. Okay. I sorry, I, I, sorry about that. I should have clarified. I sort of went through it fast, so I apologize about that. Was there any other questions? You know what? I actually had one there, Summer. Um, uh -huh. I. I think it, it, yeah, it's my understanding that this version of the VI SPINAT is the one that all of balance of state should be using. Is, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because um, I know uh, in Denver, uh, SSVF uh, VOA was using kind of a different version that had more specific uh, veteran questions on there. Um, but, you know, after kind of speaking with Sean Hayes a little bit, it sounds like this is really the universal uh, VI SPDAT and one everyone should be using, right? Yes. So there was one before that everyone was using, and that was the one, VI SPDAT one. And then um, they changed some questions and things, and now they want everyone to use this VI SPDAT 2.0. Sounds good to me. All right. Was there anything else or anything that I can clarify for anyone? No, good job, Summer. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. And like I said, if there's any other questions or things that come up, you can always contact me and <coughs> Summer, right. can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, I finally figured it out. OK, um, so Tammy, we'll make sure that we follow up on our end with the disability stuff, as um, Summer said, and we'll get back to you because I'm not sure that you can actually ask them if they have a disability. Um, <clears throat> But we do um, ask those questions, and sometimes if you say, do you have any award letters, you can say, they'll tell you up front that it's for Social Security or whatever. And I know that we've had this discussion in our program, and Melanie, I don't know if you remember, but it seemed like permanent supportive housing, they were the ones, once they got referred, who were checking and making sure that the person had the disability. Is that correct? Or was it the referring agency did the yes, that nope. Um, it is whatever agency that accepts the referral um, and that will be housing them that is required for uh, that is required to determine things like chronic status because that determines eligibility. Um, so, mm, okay. but we also yeah, it, it run into problems with that, and so we were, we're working through that as well, Tammy. But um, we'll follow up on that and and make sure we get back to you with a clearer answer. Okay, thank you. It's helpful. Uh -huh. Good job, Summer. Thanks. Yes, thank you yeah, thank so you. much. Um, I'm going to end the recording now. Um, <clears throat>